This little YouTube channel passed a major milestone recently, 100 subscribers. Thank you everybody who's been following along. Now I know that 100 is not really an impressive number in internet terms, but it means a lot to me. And to commemorate that, I wanted to say thank you to everybody by explaining some of the kind of unique properties of the number 100. Now obviously 100 is used a lot in everyday kind of mathematics, like calculating percentages or the centigrade scale for temperature or dollars and cents. But 100 actually has some kind of quirky and unique properties as well. For example, in number theory, 100 is what's called a Leyland number. And Leyland numbers are any number that conforms to this pattern, x to the y plus y to the x. In the case of 100, this is 2 to the 6th power plus 6 squared, which equals 100. Now these Leyland numbers, they're not particularly useful to us, except when they're prime. These Leyland primes, like the number 17, which can be broken down into 2 cubed plus 3 squared, these can be useful sometimes for kind of testing or probing the primality of different numbers. 100 is also something called a Harshad number or sometimes called a Niven number. These are integers that are divisible by the sum of their digits. Let me give you an example. 18 has two digits, 1 and 8. And if we add those together, 1 plus 8 equals 9. And 9 is a factor of 18. That makes 18 a Harshad number. Now in the case of 100, especially in base 10, this is pretty simple. 100 is 1 and 0 and 0, which equals 1, and everything can be divided by 1. But 100 is also a Harshad number in other bases, particularly interestingly in base 4. Now before we go any further, let's remember that in base 4, our different places are not the same as they are in decimal. So the first one here is the 1's place, but that next one is the 4's place. And every other place is a power of 4, so our 16's place and our 64's place. When you add that together, 164 plus 2 sets of 16 plus 1 set of 4, we get 100. Now let's remember also here that 10 in base 4 is not equal to 10. It's 4. Because 10 in base 4 is equal to 4 in base 10. And that is kind of a quirky fact on its own. But where this gets really interesting is that 100 in base 4 is also a self-descriptive number. And these are some of the coolest numbers out there. A self-descriptive number has two unique characteristics. The first one is that the number of digits is equal to the base. In other words, in base 4, 1210 has four digits, which is the same as base 4. But also, each digit and where it falls describes itself perfectly. We have the numbers from left to right in position 0, position 1, position 2, and position 3. In the position 0, we have a 1, and that's because the number 0 appears only once in this number. In position 1, we have a 2. That means that the number 1 appears two times in the number. 1, 2, 1, 0. And in position 2, we have a 1, because there's exactly one number 2 in the number. In other words, everything about this number describes itself perfectly, hence the term self-descriptive number. 100 is also what's known as a polygonal number. And polygonal numbers means that if you imagine the number as a collection of stones, or perhaps a collection of dots, as we're going to show on the computer, if you can arrange those stones or those dots to form a regular polygon, then that number is a polygonal number. Let's start with the simplest type of polygon, a triangle. Now all of these, as a rule, start with one. But the first one that looks to us like a regular polygon would be three, because we can arrange it to look like an equilateral triangle. And the next triangle in this series would be the number 6. Now at this point you may be thinking to yourself, okay, triangles have three angles, they have three sides, so all multiples of 3 will be a triangular number. 
but actually the next one in the series is 10, followed by the number 15. Now, the reason for this is, instead of looking at how many points it has or how many sides, look at how many numbers we're adding in each step. To get from the first dot to the second one, we're adding two dots. And then to get to the next triangle, we're adding three dots, followed by four dots and five dots. This means that we can actually figure out where the next one will be without having to put all of our dots down on the ground. We know that the next one will add six dots, so the next triangular number will be 21. Let's go up one in our polygon world to squares. Now, like I said before, they all start with one, but the first one that looks to us like a square would be the number four. And the next one, nine, 16, and 25. This pattern should look pretty easy to you because what we're really looking at is one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, and five squared. So we know the next one will be six squared or 36. After all, that's what the number squared means in the first place. Now we can keep going with these polygons and move on to hexagons or octagons, but the place where 100 comes into play is at the 18-sided polygon, otherwise known as an octadecagon. Now these polygonal numbers can actually become more interesting if we carry it a step further, because 100 is also a squared triangular number. And what that means is that the sum of the first n cubes is equal to the square of the nth triangular number. Now, that probably means nothing if you're not familiar with these mathematical terms. And this mathematical formula makes it even more confusing, I'm sure. But it's actually a pretty simple concept. What it means is that 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed equals 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all of that squared. And this can keep going on in this series as well. Let's check and make sure that that arithmetic makes sense. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. And 4 cubed is 64. Add all of that together and you get our big friend 100. Same thing on the right hand of this equation. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. And of course 10 squared is also 100. But let's look at it graphically to see if it makes more sense. Here is one block. And whether we square it or cube it, we still have only one. But here's two blocks. And if we square it, we get four blocks. And if we cube it, we get eight blocks. Now let's remember that and keep it in mind that two cubed is eight. We can keep going this way. Here's three blocks. Squared, that makes nine. And cubed, that makes 27. But look at the relationship they have now. As you can see, one cubed plus two cubed, which was eight blocks as we recall, equals nine. But that's the same down below as one plus two, which is three, squared, which is also nine. And we can see that that continues with three and four and five ad infinitum. This is actually a really cool relationship between cubes and squares. 100 is also what's known as a semi-perfect number. And to understand what that means, first we should look at what perfect numbers are. A perfect number is any number that is equal to the sum of all of its proper divisors. Let's look at the number six, which is a perfect number. Six can be divided by one, six times. It can also be divided by two, three times, and divided by three, twice, and of course it can be divided by itself, once. In other words, its proper divisors are 1, 2, and 3. And if we add these all together, it's equal to the number itself. This is why we call it a perfect number. Now, by contrast, a semi-perfect number is a number that's equal to the sum of some of its proper divisors. That's like our number 100. 100 can be divided by 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, and 50. That's a lot of divisors. And if we add all of these up, it equals more than 100. But if we add up only some of them, we can get it to equal exactly 100. Now, a number that is smaller than the 
sum of its divisors, is actually called an abundant number. And by definition, all semi-perfect numbers are either perfect or abundant. But there are cases of abundant numbers that are not semi-perfect. Here's a chart. As you can see here, the number 70, which is circled in gray, is called weird. Because any number that is abundant and not semi-perfect is a weird number. I love when mathematicians give number sets these kind of strange names like weird numbers, friendly numbers, evil numbers, and I definitely recommend everybody to go look those up. 100 is also an Erdős Woods number. Now in a previous video, we talked about Paul Erdős, the Hungarian mathematician, and how I think he's the coolest guy in the world. But even for a fan like me, this can get a little bit complicated if you're not really a fan of mathematics. But I promise you I'll try to explain it in a way that makes sense. Now the definition of an Erdős Woods number is a value k for which a positive integer n exists such that a sequence of consecutive integers n, n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on, all the way to n plus k, have a common factor with one of the end points. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense to people who aren't familiar with mathematical terms, but what it means is a consecutive set of integers, let's just say a bunch of numbers that follow each other, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And k in this case will represent how many numbers are in that series, the length of the series. So let's start with the smallest Erdős Woods number, which is 16. And the smallest integer which satisfies this is 2,184. That means that our series will begin with the number 2,184. And it will end with these numbers combined. 2,184 plus 16, which equals 2,200. That gives us all of these numbers. Every number between 2,184 and 2,200. 16 total numbers. And what we're trying to check here is that these numbers have a common factor with either the end point, 2200, or the beginning point, 2184. Now let's look at what those common factors would be. The factors of the end points for 2184, the factors are 2, 3, 7, and 13. The factors of 2200 are 2, 5, and 11. So that means every number in this series has to be divisible by either 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, or 13. So let's check and see if they do. Now the first number in this series ends in a 5, so we know right off the bat that it's divisible by 5. The next one, 2186, is even, so we know it's divisible by 2. By that logic, actually, we can cross off all the even numbers in this series because we know all of them will be divisible by 2. So the next one, 2187, is divisible by 3. 2189 is divisible by 11. 2191 is divisible by 7. 2193 is divisible by 3. 2195 is divisible by 5. 2197 is divisible by 13. And 2199 is divisible by 3. So we can check and see that all of these are divisible by one of the same factors as either the beginning point or the end point of the series. And we can actually double check this to see if the numbers before this series or after this series meet the same criteria. For example, one less than the beginning point, so 2183, it's not divisible by any of these factors. And if we go one further, 2201, that's also not divisible by any of these factors, which makes this a unique set, giving us the Erdős Woods number of 16. Now these Erdős Woods numbers, I don't really know what they're for or what they do, but what I do know is they showed up as a cryptic in an episode of Mr. Robot. Go ahead and check it out. Number sets. Where? Where? Where are you? 
thanks again to everybody who's been following along so far. It really means a lot to me, every single subscriber that we get. I know that a lot of you have been encouraging this channel to grow, and I hope it does too, but secretly there's a part of me that kind of likes it being our own little private clubhouse on this corner of the internet. Nevertheless, I'm really looking forward to the next milestone and putting out that next video for you, so stay tuned.